and the media won't even call it racially based. Can you imagine if a white guy went and did this? You, you, you'd never hear the end of it, which we didn't with the Charleston situation, which again, he said he was doing it because of the race war that he saw from his perspective from MSNBC. So they're triggering both sides to do this. It's an example of mass mind control. We'll be back and tell you where it's all going. Stay with us. One of the chants heard from protesters is being called disgusting by rank and file St. Paul police officers. Police Federation leaders say the threatening refrain is divisive and dangerous and won't lead to improved police relations. As Bill Hudson explains, March. One of the chants heard from protesters is being called disgusting by rank and file St. Paul police officers. Police Federation leaders say the threatening refrain is divisive and dangerous and won't lead to improved police relations. As Bill Hudson explains, March organizers say they're not about to apologize. By most accounts, it was a peaceful march down Snelling Avenue, though intended to disrupt leisure to deliver a message of justice. We weren't surprised that it was peaceful, but we were glad that everything worked out right. But along the way, protesters broke into a pointed refrain. What some may find offensive is also free speech. What's ironic here is that marchers were being protected by the very officers targeted in the chant. Statements and chants like that are just ignorant. You know, I find it absolutely disgusting. Officer Dave Titus heads the St. Paul Police Federation. He called it dangerous and outrageous rhetoric, especially coming just hours after a Texas deputy was gunned down in cold blood. I don't think chanting uh, or, uh, you know, singing chants that are basically promoting killing police officers is peaceful. March organizer Rashad Turner says there's a big difference between words and actions. It definitely wasn't a threat. You know, I don't know if they would have received it differently if we'd have said maybe on a stick or something like that, but, you know, we're, we're out there chanting. We're using our voices. Rhetoric that doesn't appear to have stopped with a march. All right, that's enough. Out a couple of words or one All right. And, 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 and that is some of the mild stuff that's being pushed, but, but here's the deal. These Black Lives Matter groups are useful idiots. They're run by the social engineers at the Ford Foundation, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the White House, Hillary. They're all connected. George Soros funds the whole thing. This is meant to create bad race relations. When you're in a restaurant or driving down the road, people beating on your car, blocking the road. I mean, we've had some of the Black Lives Matter thug types, black and white, show up and threaten to attack our reporters. Reporters have been attacked all over the country, including black reporters. It's an excuse to go out and act like thugs. And, and I'll just say it, you look at the actual Black Lives Matter group, not protesters against police brutality or problems. They're very legitimate. I'll be honest, it looks like a bunch of lazy, stupid, super overweight, dumb couch potatoes. And I'm not attacking folks that get overweight, but uh, on average, those people probably weighed 350 pounds in Minnesota. I mean, they've been sitting around on a couch on welfare, watching TV all day, watching MSNBC, actually believing white people are hiding under the table are going to come out and kill them. And it's just so sad to watch these spoiled brats who are entitled, including all the little white, politically correct yuppies that have, I've seen in countless videos, you know, chanting deck the halls with dead cops and pigs in a blanket, you know, fry them like bacon. And I see the comments online, the tweets, time to start busting caps in them, time to start killing cops. You know, uh, uh, People praise on Twitter. Watson's on vacation for the next week, but if our writers want to go to Twitter, that's a story right there. I saw it this morning and this weekend. I forgot to tell you, people praising the dead cop. That'll teach these cops how to behave. No, it won't. It'll make the cops become more militaristic, more paranoid. Again, the central government wants to start a race war in this country, as I've been saying for many years, and they're going to start it right when the economic collapse starts to act like the collapse is caused by the riots, by the destabilization. They'll also probably start a foreign war right when the collapse comes. Notice what's happening off the coast of China. Notice what's happening in North Korea. Notice what's happening in Ukraine. Notice what's happening in Georgia right now. The world is moving into chaos by design. And that's why I get so upset. We need to stop this. This is stupid. 
all lives matter and all black lives matter. You want to get upset about some dead black people, maybe a couple hundred black people get shot and killed in questionable circumstances by the police, and that's too many. But, I mean, we've talked about it. Fifty-plus percent of black people never get born in this country. They get aborted, and they're targeted for that. But I can't get any of these leftist black people to care. Because it's too much fun to tune into Al Sharpton and to be manipulated, to be played with, to be absolutely scammed. And for the police as well, I'm going to talk about this in the second hour. Drug culture is bad. Drugs attract bad people. It's got a lot of bad things connected to it. And by making drugs illegal in the 30s, it made it lucrative, it made it criminal, and it made it get worse. And no one can uh, deny that criminal central banks are shipping drugs in and using the drug war to corrupt the police. So we'll talk about problems with the police in the second hour, okay? But the answer is not randomly shooting cops We're in the We're on the march. I have worked tirelessly for 20 years to fight the construction of the police state. To stop the globalization of the federal government and the globalization of local police through the federal government. We did succeed in informing the public of the danger, but we failed in stopping the transformation. But just as Homeland Security was set up to supposedly protect us from Al-Qaeda, now our government openly funds Al-Qaeda and ISIS and tells us that Homeland Security is mainly for veterans, gun owners, and the Tea Party, and Christians. And the IRS publicly, openly, nakedly targets and persecutes Christians, Second Amendment groups, veterans groups. There is a war on veterans, on police, on gun owners, on property owners, on Christians, on libertarians. Because we aren't compatible with this new collectivist world government system. And that's why it's so wonderful to have all of these different black sheriffs and people running for sheriff around the country who happen to be black. Because it absolutely sabotages the narrative that if you're a, quote, minority, you can't be in the liberty movement. Plus, I've heard this particular man running for sheriff down in Houston give a speech. And, I mean, David Clark gives a better speech than, I'd say, a Richard Mack. It's not because they're black. It's because they really get what's going on, and they come across really strong. Because if we ever get the people out there that love liberty together. It's over for the globalist. And, and I know that's obvious, but that's why they're pushing racial division. It's so disgusting how, how, how naked it is. The word is naked. It's so obvious they're doing it. They admit they're doing it. It's so diabolical. It's criminal. It is sedition to spend $33 million in Ferguson alone in the last year and a half to have Soros combined with the media openly trying to create just absolute hysterical, feverish hatred at, at, at injustice that is blown out of proportion to where it's the only issue in the world and then to point that politically at local government, it's so crystal clear what this is meant to do. And it lets you know that we have seen only the beginning. Can you imagine with the Obamacare and the borders open and the power plants getting shut off and the attacks on the Second Amendment outside of law and the funding of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the world government being announced the lawlessness of the people that have grabbed control of our government. Why are they now in a campaign demonizing 
state government because they know when things get really bad, the avenue to stop it will be the states getting together and saying no to the captured federal government. They know that's the main constitutional avenue, and so they're already preparing it like it's Civil War II in the narrative where the average Democrat that you talk to thinks 1776 was when the South was defeated or when Hitler was defeated. People think 4th of July, we've gone out in Austin, we've gone out in California, and trendies believe that, that the American consciousness is the Civil War or is World War II, and then they project our war with the Nazis back onto America and imply that the police and white people are all Nazis. This is the Hollywood narrative, and it's so incredibly ass-backwards. But when you've got an ignorant public that can't tell you the three branches of government, that can't tell you the state capital on average, that can't tell you who the vice president is in many cases, there's a new video on Infowars.com that Mark Dice went out and shot in Southern California where people believe the Loch Ness Monster has been captured and is being held at SeaWorld. This is the same place he goes to the university and to the beachfront boardwalk where 8 out of 10 people say put gun owners in forced labor camps. Where 8 out of 10 people say ban the Bill of Rights for Hillary. And these aren't people that can't speak English. These are articulate people where he goes, yeah, we want to put them in you know, forced labor camps and take their guns and imprison them. And the Democrat guy goes, you don't tell me, buddy, I'm ready. These are folks lusting after power, lusting after political correctness. And they will do whatever they're told by the establishment because they don't have a worldview. They regurgitate whatever they're told. And more and more of this country is filled with people like this who are just automatons who want to sit on the couch and get their welfare check all day. That's the pressure from below. And the pressure from above... The pressure being driven down by the less than one-tenth of one percent of the ultra-rich to play the giant unwashed mass off against the liberty, the property, the engine of freedom that's left in this country. This is a consolidation war. And it's so essential for viewers to understand this is not talk. This is not hyperbole. This is not talking points or rhetoric. I do not have the vocabulary to describe to you how real this is and how diabolical this is and how serious this is. The globalist plan to bring in another 30, 40, 50 million illegals, baptize them into socialist communist ideology, Bill Ayers, Bernadine Smith, Saul Alinsky ideology. They will stage terror attacks. They will blame it on the liberty movement, and they will have a purge, and they will arrest hundreds of thousands of veterans, police, patriots, you name it, if we don't get involved and get aggressive. That's where they want to take us. They say they want to arrest us. They say they want to come after us. They say they want to kill us. And this happens in most other countries when they become corrupt and collapse. Why then don't people understand it's happening here? They hate bitter clingers. But if we use their attack to wake people up, we can rally humanity and absolutely defeat them politically. And we're on the verge of that right now. They can feel it. They can see it. That's why you're seeing a bum rush to the finish line pulling out every stop. And we can't be mad at these zombies that think the Loch Ness Monster was captured or who don't know what the 4th of July is. Almost everyone you talk to, what's the 4th of July? It's when we seceded and then defeated the South. It's when we beat Hitler. That's because that's not taught. That's not in the culture. That's not promoted. 